Well, folks, we're back to talk about Nintendo Switch 2 because we have three different things we need to get to, and we're going to timestamp it all below like usual. One of those things is the fact that we may know the Switch 2's code name or at least something being used behind the scenes between developers and Nintendo when it comes to Switch 2. And we're going to go behind the background of how this story ended up developing. Uh, we also need to go over some misinformation that's being presented by some pretty massive news outlets out there that actually makes me a little bit ashamed uh that as content creators and news providers that we're loosely associated to places like this and on top of that nintendo has practically confirmed a feature for nintendo switch 2 that i think a lot of you guys are going to find really exciting or at least just be happy about so three different things with switch 2 that's pretty awesome. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you enjoy all of our content here, I'd appreciate if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 150,000 subscribers this year. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. We're talking about the code name here of Nintendo Switch, and there's a lot to go over with this story. So for a while now, we've been speculating if Nintendo would ever give us the code name, and they didn't. They just announced it as the Nintendo Switch successor for Nintendo Switch 2. And there has been a person over on Fami Boards this entire time named Old Puck who claimed that he has known the code name for some time. So after Nintendo announced the Nintendo Switch 2, Old Puck promised he would eventually reveal the code name, but it turns out we didn't really necessarily need to wait for him uh, because there is somebody over there that just yesterday put up a post over on Fami Boards that contains some coding that might have the code name in it. So let's go over and look here. This comes from this guy, Mario90. And if you open up this, you'll see there is this code base here. And as you're going through it, I see package IDs, Nintendo SDKs. Uh, you can see the bezel engine tools brought up. Um, you know, a plugin for Unity is listed in here. So this might be uh, part of that bezel engine that we're seeing for uh, Endless Ocean Luminous. But as you go down here, you'll see, you know, this list item, get standard family name, Nintendo SDK NX add-on. We all know Nintendo NX is obviously the code name for the Nintendo Switch. Well, we have the Nintendo SDK Next, the Nintendo SDK Pia, Nintendo NX CPU Profiler, MVN Graphics Debugger, Low Level Graphics Debugger, NLib for NX, and then that was item one, right? The Nintendo SDK NX add-on. Item two, Nintendo SDK Muji add-on. And there's not really a lot listed here because it's a new list item, uh, platform.muji.name. So supposedly this may come from Endless Ocean Luminous Code. I don't have the ability or at least... Uh, the desire to go through the code base of uh, that game. And I know I usually want to do more verification than just this post, but here's the thing. The th everything goes just so much deeper. So as we dive into this story, we can't really confirm that the code name actually exists in that software at this time. However, a user who also garnered a bit of a reputation over on Fami Boards in LIC, basically quoted it and said, there it is. And you can see that right here. Uh, he's quoting the Mario 90 post and he says, you know, well, there it is. Now, some people have taken that to mean that, well, yeah, there it is. That is indeed the code name. Now, it's not actually quite that simple because if you've been following the thread, uh, LIC has actually noted uh, several times that it, it sounds like he doesn't actually know what the code name is. He's just leaving comments like any of us would. But there's actually a user that all the way back on Tuesday when Nintendo revealed that the system was, well, let's just say they officially revealed the system anyways. There was this guy named Calm Mind over there that just dropped the word Muji and moved on. Now, that's all fine. And at this point, you could just argue this is all just speculation. But things kept getting more more and more interesting. You see, the guy who runs Nintendo Universal, Necro Felipe Lima, went over onto X and put out this saying the Nintendo Switch Muji is the successor. And if you read his translated post here, it says, I've already seen the code name of Nintendo's new console was leaked on Fami boards, which have been circulating restrictedly among some people since last year. And it's correct. Now, of course, we all know that 
potentially, we, we're not really sure if Necrophilia Belima is necessarily the most reliable of people out there because a lot of stuff he says, he's never really the first one to say it, or at least it doesn't feel like he is. I haven't been able to trace anything directly back to him. But things don't really end there because eventually that one user I brought up at the beginning, Old Puck, today decided to comment on this name. And if you go through this entire long post he has here, there's some interesting things he brings up. He's essentially saying that Muji is the name he has heard, but no, he isn't sure if it's the final code name of everything, referencing that before Nintendo referred to the Switch as NX, it was actually known as Indie. And in that similar way, Muji could just be a placeholder name, or it could be like the Indie name before it gets a final name. Uh, it, there's a whole lot of stuff here. Obviously ending here by saying, you know, there's nothing to really see here because in the end it doesn't really matter right like the code name is basically irrelevant it's just fun to speculate about uh so that is really where the code name stuff stands now muji itself doesn't have much of a meaning in japanese other than something along the line of like a placeholder uh it's also the name of a very popular retail branch out in japan so there is that could this be the code name could this be something floating around with developers and nintendo Absolutely. Uh, we don't really know. This is not the same sort of affirmation stuff we had like yesterday where we know that that stuff is legit. So that is just something I wanted to make sure we covered in depth here because this is floating around on the internet. A lot of people are talking about it. It's just like the, the code name NX. There's not like a lot of meaning behind it, even if it is the code name, but it's just there for you guys just to have that knowledge, that little nugget in the back of your mind in case this ever gets confirmed later, like later as in after the system comes out and we start to see this name pop up in Nintendo Switch 2 games in different engines and stuff. All right, so next up we got to talk about some misinformation that seems to be floating out there about what Furukawa said about Switch 2 at the financial briefing. And the first thing, the article that at least popped into my feed about this that really got some warning bells going was this one over at IGN that said, don't expect Nintendo Switch 2 before April of 2025, which you could argue at this point, they, I think retitled this a bit. It could just be an opinion. But if you read this, Nintendo signal that the Switch successor will not come out until April 2025 at the earliest. And it says, at an investor focused question and answer session translated by Game Industry Biz, Nintendo President Shotaro Furukawa confirmed that its forecast for the current financial year does not include the console dubbed Switch 2. Very interesting. So then obviously you're like, well, Game Industry Biz is the source on that. Let's go look at them. Well, their headline says Nintendo forecast doesn't include Switch 2 before or April 2025. Very interesting because it's not quite exactly what Furukawa was referencing. But if you go into here, they've updated this article since, and it says in a QA transcript of this week's earnings translated by themselves, Nintendo President Furukawa told investors the sales forecast for this period do not include the sales of the Nintendo Switch successor device, which is quite fascinating because that's not exactly the full context of what Furukawa had to say. And in fact, all of this stuff over on Twitter has community notes uh, where people are correcting this. But let's dive into what was actually said because it's in this Q&A summary from Nintendo that now has their own official translation. It's part of question two, and there's two official documents from Nintendo we're gonna reference here. So first we have this Q&A summary with question two here, where it says, looking at the harbor sales forecast for the current fiscal year, ending March, 2025, if the forecast Forecast does not include the sales of the successor to Nintendo Switch. It seems like the numbers are not that much lower than the previous fiscal year, ending March 2024. Are you thinking that announcing a successor system will not affect the momentum of the Nintendo Switch business? For Akawa, this is the line they're talking about. The sales forecast for the current fiscal year do not include the successor to Nintendo Switch. Now, let's continue here because there's a lot of context that needs to be had. If you just take that line out of context, it's very easy to agree with those headlines. Nintendo Switch hardware sales remain relatively strong, but we are now in the system's eighth year, and we recognize that it is becoming more challenging to maintain momentum as time passes. Even so, during last year's holiday season, many consumers picked up a Nintendo Switch system for the first time, particularly children and families in markets outside of Japan. We will release new titles this fiscal year, and in addition, many people have watched the new Super Mario Bros. movie through 
through various means since its theatrical release, so with factors like that, we believe we'll be able to continue to generate new demand. Also, there's a large catalog of existing Nintendo Switch games, so if we can effectively convey the appeal of these evergreen titles, we believe we can also pursue the demand for multiple systems in the same household born from the unique value of Nintendo Switch. We do not think the announcement of the successor to Nintendo Switch and future related communications will have zero impact on Nintendo Switch sales. However, we hope to maximize sales this fiscal year by maintaining a good balance between new demand and demand for multiple systems. Our hardware sales forecast of 13.5 million units for the fiscal year will not easily be achieved, but with the introduction of challenging ourselves, we have set this number as the initial fiscal year guidance. And there's a way you can see you can interpret this that there will not be a Nintendo Switch to this fiscal year. Again, the sales forecast does not include the successor, never really brings up what this 13.5 million number means. Well, that's because he doesn't need to tell us what the 13.5 million number means because they already told us. Let's go ahead and go over to another document here from Nintendo. This one is literally from their financial forecast where the 13.5 million number comes from. Consolidated financial forecast, hardware, Nintendo Switch, 15.7 million actual forecast, 13.5 million. Let me repeat, Nintendo Switch, the 13.5 million was always hardware forecasted specifically for Nintendo Switch. So of course, when you end up going back to the actual statement from Nintendo and you read what it says, the sales forecast for the current fiscal year does not include the successor to Nintendo Switch. And it talks about this whole time about how it's not part of the 13.5 million. That's because it's dealing with that particular system. So the context really is that Nintendo's just not talking about the Nintendo Switch successor and if it's going to come out or what sales or any of that stuff means right now. That's really the context here. We got to remember, yes, it is entirely possible, maybe even likely, the Nintendo Switch 2 is not going to arrive this fiscal year and instead later in 2025, but they will be making announcements or at least a announcement related to the system at some point this fiscal year. They already technically did announce the system on Tuesday. They recognize it could have an impact on system sales they're still really bullish on how many systems they're going to sell and in the end we don't know if this thing's going to arrive it's also notable that if it did launch in march of 2025 that it would have a negligible impact on Nintendo's actual fiscal year because it's right at the end of the fiscal year with a very limited sales period and software sales on it wouldn't be very large. You'd be very limited in how many hardware you could sell in such a short period. So yeah, it wouldn't really impact this fiscal year that much regardless if it did land at the very end of the fiscal year. So the point is the headlines made it seem like it was a fact that Furukawa said it's not coming out this year. Really, he was just talking about how it's not part of that hardware fiscal forecast, which was specifically only about Nintendo Switch in the first place. Yeah, they weren't going to give us projections for sales on a system they haven't even given us release timing on yet. So just correcting some of that misinformation out there because a lot of it was based on that translation by GameIndustry.biz that didn't even provide the full context of that conversation. Now, the last thing we got to get into is something Nintendo did highlight in their Q&A as well. Something we technically went over uh, the other day, but we kind of glossed over this aspect of it. And this actually has to deal with something for Nintendo switch to a feature that many of us are going to see glad to exist so let's go over here to question four of the q a again this is nintendo's official translation i think one big change over the life cycle of nintendo switch is the remarkable growth in digital sales looking back at the progress of the digital business and its contribution to financial results thus far i would like to know what the expectations you have for the digital business over the life cycle of the successor to nintendo switch so literally asking about expectations of, of digital sales on that platform, the new platform, Switch 2. Furukawa says, as you pointed out, the expanded scale of our digital business can be cited as one of many changes since the release of Nintendo Switch. In the previous fiscal year, robust sales of Nintendo Switch online memberships and add-on content for games such as Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Splatoon 3, as well as the depreciation of the yen, led to an increase in both the digital sales amount and the digital sales ratio. Our objective is not to simply increase the share of digital sales, but to maximize overall game software sales, including the sales of physical software. Oh, we're not done yet though. 
This policy will remain unchanged going forward. In this context, we need to enhance user friendliness for both consumers who play packaged software and those who play download versions. Going forward, we intend to keep working on improvements to devise better solutions. Compared to 2017, when the Nintendo Switch was launched, digitization has progressed in many aspects of our lives. At this moment, if digital content continues to become more useful and convenient over time, we believe that more of our consumers will choose digital products with the successor to Nintendo Switch, just as they did with the Nintendo Switch. So what is he talking about here? Without saying the direct phrase, physical games are going to be present on Nintendo Switch 2. He, we don't have to worry about an all digital platform or something like that. He said digital is important. This is a commitment. The policy is going to remain unchanged moving forward. So yes, we should have physical cartridge slot on Nintendo Switch 2 physical game support. Those of you folks that were really, really worried because Nintendo's digital sales are increasing almost 60% of all software sales for them in the last fiscal year were digital. Don't worry, Nintendo realizes there is still a very strong demand for physical and they're gonna keep providing it. Nintendo's also a little bit uniquely uh, positioned for physical. All they gotta do is increase the read and write speeds of their cartridges and there's already tech out there such as 3D NAND that can do that and that would enable you to still load games directly off the cartridge without needing to install them the way that the other platforms do with physical discs because they have such a slow read and write speeds that you need to download the game and install it onto a hard drive in order to have good load times. You don't necessarily need to do that with Nintendo Switch at all, let alone with Switch 2. Of course, one of the big issues we know with physical media during the Nintendo Switch lifecycle is because of how expensive the cartridges are. Several third parties would only put like a little bit of the game on there and you'd have to download the rest anyways. I'm afraid stuff like that's probably going to happen with Call of Duty and other things on Switch 2, but at least we know for Nintendo's own games, they will be putting the entire game on a physical cartridge. So, hey, look, physical media being supported moving forward. I know that's a really big thing people were worried about. The other things, obviously, backwards compatibility and stuff like that. Well, I think that is a given. We still technically don't have backwards compatibility confirmed from Nintendo. Lots of rumors around it, lots of reports. But Nintendo didn't address that, and there wasn't any questions specific to if the next hardware will end up supporting it. Remember, Nintendo has another financial briefing basically three months from this week. So we'll have another one in three months. We have the uh, 84th annual shareholders meeting as well in June, which also will have a Q&A, and there could be lots of questions about the Switch successor then. We know that there is an upcoming June Nintendo Direct focused on Nintendo Switch games in the second half of 2024 as well. Look, we just know there's a lot of stuff coming. And yeah, guess what? More news officially on the Nintendo Nintendo Switch successor, aka Nintendo Switch 2, at some point between now and March of 2025. This is just exciting times for us Nintendo fans. Of course, what we really need is software, so I'm very hopeful that June Direct has at least one banger in the second half of this year that we could sort of tide us over as we're all now in this waiting period for Nintendo to give us the launch window and, and begin all the marketing for their next platform. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubblejads from Nintendo Prime. Why don't you go down below and let me know if you want me to put together a video where I compile all the rumors and all the facts and everything into one video where we go over, okay, here's what we, we, we know based on like real leaks and Nintendo's own words. And then here's like other stuff and features and stuff that are rumored for the platform. And then there's stuff that's maybe more on the fringes that is more speculative based on the rumors. There's different clock speeds out there that are really highly speculated. As an example, it's, it's based on the rumors, but we don't know if those are legit or not so that's something i want to know if you guys are sort of interested in everything we know video and i'm just pointing that out because i do think we're sort of reaching the end of the official leak period for nintendo switch 2 so much came out of those shipping documents obviously we have nintendo's confirmation of things in the end i don't really know that there's a whole lot more that needs to come out besides clock speeds and i don't think we're going to see stuff like that for a long time and obviously we could have software rumors and leaks like that's going to continue but uh that's not obviously related specific to just the platform itself so i do think it might be the appropriate time to do like an everything we know or may know about the platform i'm not really sure how i want 
want to title it. Uh, but if that's a video you're interested in, just let me know down in the comments below because that is something we can maybe compile. And if not, put out this weekend, at least get it ready to put out on Monday. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're enjoying uh, some of these deeper dives where I'm really trying to trying to lock down and get you all the information I can. I hope you guys end up having a wonderful day. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.